Welcome to the pre-recording of lecture 42, uh, the second half of the session 21 in the eight-week summer session. So this is the beginning of the last week of classes and uh, the last lecture also before we start preparing for the final exam at the end of the week. So the topic of this lecture is on an introduction to machine learning, um, mainly terminology, but I will end the slide presentation also with the motivation why we picked Python. Um, but uh, first I will introduce, so there are two parts in this slide presentation. I will use some uh, popular writing to introduce large language models. And then I will give definitions of machine learning, in particular supervised and unsupervised uh, learning, and introduce a classical benchmark, um, a classical example of a success of uh, neural networks. Okay, um, intelligence um, and intelligence tests. Um, so for this um, topic and also for the definition, for a definition of a large language model, I have been using a very recent uh, writing. So this appeared as a feature in the journal Nature. Um, only a couple of pages uh, long. Um, so it Probably it's injustice that I'm summarizing it here in essentially three items. So what is a large language model? A large language model will generate plausible next words when given an input text. So this input text is also called a prompt. And uh, the next words are actually computed uh, based on trained data and based on statistical correlation between the words in trained data. Uh, so large language models have actually been very successful um, in, in the way that they are now, everybody's aware of these chatbots. And actually most chatbots will actually pass with what we know as the Turing test. So in this course, we mentioned Turing in the beginning at the Turing machine and also then with the Turing tests. Um, uh, the Turing tests is as not as specifically, as clearly specified as one might perhaps want, uh, but it is the, 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 the test is that if a human could no longer tell the difference or would have difficulty telling the difference on whether um, a conversation is held with an intelligent person of, uh, or whether it is uh, conversing with a chatbot. Um, so the paper, the feature paper in Nature defines uh, human intelligence as the ability to make abstractions uh, from everyday knowledge and to apply these abstractions to solve new problems. Uh, the feature has some examples of some very simple uh, tests that humans can solve almost with, with very um, high um, success and where actually uh, machines actually are uh, struggling. Um, so machines, they still need, uh, so as a programmer, you still need to be very precise in giving instructions in your program, what your computer is doing. Uh, there is an analogy here with large language models. They need to be trained on massive, massive, massive data. They need to be seen so many examples uh, in order to produce some uh, meaning results, meaningful results. Um, there is still ongoing research. And the other term here, the last term, is the abstraction and reasoning corpus. Uh, this is an attempt uh, to develop uh, tests 
uh, own intelligence uh, produced by artificial intelligence. Um, so that is the start. Um, how do these large language models really work and, and why do they work? Um, for this, I'm following uh, a blog post of Stephen Wolfram. Uh, we encountered Stephen Wolfram in this course with the cellular Odomeda. So it's also a fairly recent um, blog post. There's also a book uh, written about this, um, but here I will try to summarize and probably doing injustice uh, to this work. So for both the previous reference and this reference here, uh, you're more than welcome to uh, read uh, these papers. Um, large language models, they are going to generate the next uh, words uh, given a prompt. Now, how does this actually work? Well, think small, and I'm following here uh, the small thinking, the, the introductory thinking in this blog post. If you would analyze the words in the English language and look at the two letter uh, combinations of two letters, uh, then you can assign probabilities. Uh, so Stephen Wolfram has in his blog post a very nice picture of a matrix, all the letters um, squared up. And then there is, there is the probability that after uh, one particular letter, what are the possible letters um, in the English language? Uh, what stands up the, stands out that after a Q, the next letter is always has to be a U with, with sort of probability one. Now, what you could do is you could compute the probabilities for each letter. So you run this through the dictionary. So this is an indication. Uh, also an application of why frequency tables are so important. And then we compute the probabilities for the next lecture, uh, for, for the next letter um, in each two letter words. Uh, so speaking of prompts, so the first letter is the prompt and then the uh, with probability, we are computing then the next letter. Um, you can extend this to all possible words. Um, so in this blog post, there are examples of a typical English sentence. Uh, what is the word sequence? And you can repeat this for longer words. You repeat this for the probabilities of the next words. Um, now, that doesn't suffice, but I should probably have mentioned that machine learning is often also called statistical learning. So there is a very large overlap between computer science and statistics here. Um, the statistics doesn't suffice, so you need a model. Uh, so it is a mathematical model. So here an example. So this is where mathematical modeling comes in. Um, every model has parameters and they need to be tuned. Um, so we need these models for classification tasks. Uh, the example that I'm going to use in the second um, part of this lecture is the, is the recognition, is the classification of handwritten uh, digits. If we humans write a number, everybody writes it in a different way. But still, we are recognizing, we are able to recognize uh, the digits. Also, a machine can actually do this. Um, how is this working with neural networks? Um, so a neural network, I will give a formal definition, but for now it is sufficient, is that every neural network is uh, has some is a model with some parameters in there. Uh, the model will actually take on input, for the example here, the images of the digits, and it will, as output, give one of the 10 possibilities. Um, so if you like in mathematics, there is fitting, the fitting of data. So you have basis functions and you have to determine the coefficients for those basis functions in order to get a good fit. So one can see the classification problem also from within this uh, applied mathematics uh, context. Um, 
In practice, this is done with uh, minimization of a loss function. So there is a very algorithmic, a very um, methodolog met very precise method to actually train a neural network. For these large language models, uh, one considers billions and billions of data points, and uh, one 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 has um, many many many. Uh, uh, weights as well. Um, so it is extremely computationally intensive to train a neural network. Also to run these neural networks it takes um, large computational effort. Okay, um, why it work or why it actually doesn't work? Um, so computational irreducibility is introduced, also a concept by Stephen Wolfram. Um, it works. Uh, so, what wh what is the probability? W how can we learn? Um, so, learning involves making abstractions, recognizing the regularities in the problem. Um, but this works not always. Uh, I mean, it it works extremely well if there if the patterns if out of the patterns you get some small set of rules. Um, why it works, and, and this is following uh, the, 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 the observation of Stephen Wolfram here, human languages uh, may actually, after all, be rather computationally shallow, uh, may submit themselves to actually these computational reducibilities. So what the um the 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 advantage of uh, the, the 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 advances uh, accomplished by uh, these chatbots is actually that languages human languages they may actually following some laws uh, there that 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 are actually after all all not not that complicated or at least not that complicated anymore for current uh, computers all right, uh, so this is the introduction. Um, I'm most likely doing injustice to the writings. Uh, so when I printed out the blog post of Stephen Wolfram, it turned out to be 80 pages. And um, I'm skipping over a lot of steps, but I think in the three slides, I have kind of uh, tried to make abstraction of the essence of this uh, writing. Um, now let's go a little bit more formally into, um, so what is actually learning? Um, so learning in many different contexts means different things. But machine learning is a program that learns from experience um, with respect to certain task of class and a performance measure. Um, so it learns if the performance actually, as measured by this performance measures, actually improves with experience. Um, so I mentioned the uh, minimization. So you must have uh, a classification problem is a typical problem. Um, so another common example is you have pictures of cats and dogs, and that's a binary classification. Um, this works in a completely different way as you would like to define uh, what is a cat and what is a dog. Um, so this actually is by learning from pictures, looking at pictures of cats and dogs. It comes from uh, um, a manual essentially of uh, scikit-learn. Um, one of the uh, packages in the Python ecosystem that you can uh, use to run machine learning algorithms. Uh, so in this course, uh, machine learning is, um, you should know what it is and what it is, but practicing it is a different course, but it's interesting at the end of uh, introduction to computer science course to at least mention this. Um, we distinguish supervised learning, uh, so we actually know for every input what is the correct answer. Um, 
Uh, and then there is, uh, so one, one has actually, for every input, there is a label. Uh, so what it is. So for every digit that we will consider, we actually know what is the correct answer. Um, and then there are um, machine learning tasks where there is unsupervised learning. Uh, so where there is no labeled data. Um, um, so um, when we are classifying um, objects, we can tell for every object to which class it belongs. But it could also be that we try to classify but actually we don't know in advance uh, what the number of classes are. Uh, we have to learn how to cluster the data. Um, so there are algorithms that uh, do that. There is also the reduction of the dimensionality. Uh, most of the algorithms are actually work in very large data, uh, and all the algorithms are typically almost linear or quasi-linear in the size of the data. So that is important as well, because of the scalability. Uh, what is now a neural network? Uh, so there are so a neuron is essentially a nonlinear bounded function. It has inputs, so these, these inputs are the uh, pixels in the image. Um, so often image is two-dimensional, but you can flatten the images. And then um, the neurons are going to uh, also depend on weights or parameters. Uh, so there are actually, you could see this as a set of basis functions in the terminology of fitting a function. Try to approximate a set of data with a function. So there are the inputs, there are the weights, and then there are the outputs. Um, so a neural network is the composition of multiple neurons. Uh, so the output of one neuron in one layer can be to the next layer. And a deep neural network has many, many layers. Um, um, when you design a neural network, um, how many parameters do you want? Um, so how deep should your network be? These are questions uh, that are important. All right, so then here is a classical example. Um, so it's a classical example. It's already um, more than 20 year, years old, 25 years old. Um, there is this uh, paper that um, proposes the uh, optimization process, so gradient-based learning, applied to the recognition of digits. So here you see the first five images. And this is an example of um, supervised learning. So for every picture, we know the correct answer. So typically, the data set is split into uh, a training set uh, where you're going to determine the parameters in your model. And then the other uh, set of the images is used for testing to see how good your parameters have been determined. Um, okay, so that's the introduction to machine learning. I will end uh, the slide presentation with a picture of the computational ecosystem. So the software that was mentioned is scikit-learn. So scikit-learn uh, sits way over here. Um, so it's not in the basic layer. So we have been using in this course Python. There is the enhanced Python, the IPython, so the extension of the notebook, uh, the IPNB. Uh, you may have wondered why the IP stands for. Well, there's also the enhanced terminal, the enhanced shell. 
uh, that is the Jupyter notebook that we have been using. Uh, whenever I install on a new computer Python, I immediately install NumPy, SymPy, SciPy and Matplotlib. Um, so these are the packages that are very close to the basic shell. Uh, so they actually turn uh, Python into a scientific software system. Pandas, you could say, uh, we actually have gone close to using it by the uh, third project, which was on making a pie chart. Pandas can be seen as a flowchart for, um, as a spreadsheet and database uh, data processing for uh, programmers. So there is the image libraries for the image processing. Uh, working with graphs, uh, statistics, and uh, scikit-learn. Uh, what is not here is the natural language uh, toolkit. Um, so this is 2015, so there may have been... Um, so I haven't really sketched how the large language models can help us as programmers. So there are sentences in the natural language which have uh, an abstract syntax tree. So natural language processing will compute this syntax tree. And there are tools out there that are translating uh, sentences like sort a list of that is, are going to uh, write the equivalent Python commands. Okay. Um, I have a very short uh, Jupyter notebook, um, so there are no exercises for this lecture. So in some sense, this lecture is uh, kind of giving uh, the potential avenues, the potential courses. I indicated in the last slide the computational ecosystem. So one of the tracks in our program is the computational track. Um, Scikit-learn is one of the tools that are very easy to install with Conda. So we have installed Python with Conda. So you can install Conda at the command prompt. Uh, you can install Scikit-learn and that's the prerequisites. In the terminal window also installed is matplotlib. So this is useful for this classical uh, example. So it's a classical example, so software also is tested on this, uh, so it's actually built in. So if you have downloaded uh, scikit-learn, then actually load digits. Um, so I first did, uh, I first asked for the directory listing of the data sets, and I saw that load digits was in there. Um, so the help is useful. So you see uh, it's the recognition uh, of handwritten digits. Uh, so that's what I need. So the resolution of the images is actually very low. Uh, so we are dealing with 64 numbers. Um, 64 numbers uh, for every data point. Um, now this may seem a lot, but current for current computers. Uh, 1700. Uh, so I think there is a larger collection that you can download from the internet, uh, which is higher resolution and more sample sets. But for what I'm going to do in this uh, remaining 10 minutes or so, or even not 10 minutes, it's just to indicate um, how straightforward this actually is to run this. Um, so let me rerun this. So I have um, the help page, uh, which is uh, explaining the data. Uh, so the sample size, uh, so this is also something that I listed on this ecosystem. So for any practical purposes, one works with arrays and actually here matrices. An image is a two-dimensional table of numbers. Python itself is not really that well suited to work with this but numpy exports this nd array type and uh, the data frame is actually also terminology from pandas um, so um, so here you see uh, what is in the data 
um, so when you load these digits um, and actually when you install uh, you actually most likely install also a lot of dependencies uh, so you see that the arrays are actually pandas pandas is uh, using um, the numpy arrays uh, what I was doing was then typing here, uh, so that's why the help is so useful. The help has the statements, what you would need to do. Um, so I'm loading the digits. Uh, and indeed, I do have the data shape. Uh, so the first three statements execute uh, just as in the documentation. Uh, then I want to see... Um, so I have already installed matplotlib. Uh, we are using a grayscale. And then you can see the 8x8 uh, image. Uh, so the first image, so I had it also on my slide in a higher resolution. I think on my slide I was using <coughs> at least 16 by 16 matrices. Here we have 8x8. But you can recognize a 0 there. So the first image is actually a 0. Okay, I defined on the slides uh, neural networks, um, but there are many other uh, techniques. So regression uh, is one of them. Regression is actually what is it's also quite, which you may encounter in a statistics course. Um, uh, here I'm using the uh, documentation of scikit-learn. Uh, so here um, I did a very simple Google search, looking for the documentation uh, for the keywords, the uh, handwritten um, digit classification, and then scikit-learn. So I'm following what is in the documentation, um, and it uses support vector machines. Uh, so uh, what support vector machines are is actually not anymore in the scope of this introductory course. Uh, the main point, however, is that it's all very well uh, embedded in uh, the standard packages. Uh, so how does this work? We have the images, which are tables of numbers. Uh, they are reshaped as one-dimensional vectors. So we have 64 input parameters uh, here. Um, we are splitting the data into test data and training data. Um, so the, uh, there is a fit that is being done. The fitting determines the, the parameters. And here you see the outcome of uh, four samples. Uh, so you see here what is predicted. Uh, so we have the four, we recognize the four here, the nine. I'm not entirely so sure about uh, the first two predicted of the eight. Okay, so this is a very short introduction into machine learning. Um, it is the last uh, lecture before we start preparing um, into uh, for the final exam. So what is important uh, that you remember from this lecture is some kind of the basic terminology. Um, and also uh, what you can do with uh, Python. So as a programmer, uh, we can um, generate uh, these scripts and work with these uh, models.